and good afternoon it's friday and that means it's time for our lunch and learn and today we're going to be finishing up our discussion with lyme disease now today we're going to be talking about how to prevent lyme disease now a lot of times people will think you can only get lyme disease if you live on the east coast but you actually can get it here in texas uh, you can get it in many states, and so you want to be able to be very proactive. Just because you have a tick bite does not mean you are automatically going to get Lyme disease, but we're going to talk about some ways that you can prevent it. So if you are an essential oil person, you're going to want to uh, take some notes because I'm going to give you some essential oil recipes, and yes, they have been proven to be just as effective as using DEET. Now, DEET is a chemical that is very, very dangerous, D-E-E-T. It is a uh, chemical found in pesticides, and that's what kills the bugs. And this particular essential oil blend that I'm going to give you is clinically proven to uh, be as effective as the DEET. And it's a whole, uh, it's just a whole much, whole much better, whole lot better for you and for your body and for your children. So this is really, really important. Children can get Lyme disease as well. So here are some precautions that you can do. Now we know that Lyme disease comes from tick bites. We don't want to go out and get tick bites, but if we're outside in the elements, if we're hunting, if we're, I used to go quail hunting with my dad. I used to go duck hunting. I have been in the forest with my husband doing deer hunting. So, you know, not actually doing the hunting, but being on the property and that kind of thing. And there's ticks and there's chiggers and there's all kinds of things out there. So whatever you're trying to avoid, this essential oil recipe that we're going to talk about is going to help you. OK, so ticks usually hang out in wooded areas with lots of shrubs, tall grasses, weeds and leaf litter. They will attach themselves to anything that walks by. So one of the things that you want to do is to wear long pants and you want to pull your socks up over your pants. And that way the ticks don't have any way to get on to your skin. So that's one way that you can do that. I know there are some clothing that has elastic bands at the wrist and that kind of thing that also is going to help. You want to make sure that you wear um, uh, light colored clothing to provide a protective barrier. Don't know if ticks are just attracted to darker clothing, but the article that I'm reading from says that it is, they are attracted to uh, darker colors. And, and to do what I said about putting the, the socks over your pant leg and putting elastic bands on your arm so that the ticks can't get to your flesh. All right, we talked about DEET a little bit, but we we're gonna talk about this recipe for uh, essential oil blend. So this is what you're going to want to do. And you're not going to want to get these oils at Walmart. You're going to get them from a professional. You're going to get them from a health food store that has good quality pro, uh, products. You don't want to get it from the grocery store. You don't want to get it from the uh, pharmacy because they may have something that says essential oil on it. But most likely, because of price, and you can always check on the price point, essential oils are expensive. And so you want to make sure that you're getting the real thing, not something that's been adulterated. Now, adulterated means changed. Sometimes they, uh, because oils are expensive, that they will add inferior products to the oil to stretch it, to make it go further. So it's not uh, as expensive, but those inferior products are going to make the oil non effective. So you don't want to do that. You want to get your oils from a very good supplier. So here is a recipe. Uh, you want to put these in a four ounce bottle, all right, four ounces, five drops of peppermint essential oil, five drops of cedarwood essential oil, seven drops of lavender, 10 drops of geranium, 10 drops of lemongrass, and then 15 drops of lemon eucalyptus essential oil, okay? So you're going to put this in a four ounce bottle. You're going to add purified water to fill up the bottle, obviously just to the neck of the bottle. You're not going to fill up where they, you put the, the sprayer in. You're not going to do that. So you're going to put purified water in there and then you're going to shake it because why oil and water do not mix. So when you're going to use it, you're going to give it a shake. You're going to spray your whole body, whatever's going to be exposed. And you're going to keep yourself 
really sprayed up with this essential oil mixture. You want to avoid your eyes, of course. Use just common sense with that. If you're going to spray your face, just make sure you close your eyes. Would not necessarily recommend that because peppermint oil is pretty volatile and it can make your eyes sting a little bit. But you want to uh, spray that and you can spray it several times a day. You can't overdo it, but of course you want to use caution around your eyes and that kind of stuff. If you own property that is wooded, there are companies that will come and spray your ground with garlic oil and garlic oil will repel the ticks and you can do this with a commercial company you just tell them you want something holistic and what they'll come and do is spray holistic garlic oil on your ground and it will repel the ticks it will prevent them from coming on the ground i don't know if you remember when you were little i know when i was little we had dogs they were outside dogs and from time to time they would get ticks so this will help protect your animals as well if you have your yard spray. So an obvious tip that maybe people don't do is to do daily tick checks. Now we talked about this a couple of programs ago that when we would go out to the property, we would come home, my husband would check for ticks, I would check for ticks. You know, you just have to make sure that you're looking for them because on your own body, if they're on your back, right, you're not gonna see. So you wanna check in your underarm. I know you don't wanna have a tick there, but that's where they go. In your, in your underarm, you want to check there. Uh, you want to check on your back where you can't see. You want to check behind your ears. That's not a place where people regularly check. You want to check in the crease of your elbow and you want to check in the back of your knees. And depending on what kind of clothing and how much clothing you had on, if you had on shorts, you want to check in the groin area. Okay, you just want to do that. You want to be able to find these ticks if they are there. So. What happens, you also want to uh, look in your belly button too. It's a, it's a great place for ticks to hang out. Also, don't forget your scalp and your hair. So what should you do if you find a tick? Should you just grab it? Well, maybe not, that's the best thing to do. What you wanna do is to get some uh, needle nose pliers or needle nose tweezers. They're smaller, I would really recommend that. And you grab the tick and you, you clamp on it, you don't kill it but you gently tug it in, a, in one motion, slow and steady, and you try and get the tick to uh, loosen the mouth off of your skin. What a lot of people will do is they will just pinch it, and when you pinch it off, you leave the mouth parts in there, and that's what gets you infected, so you don't want to do that. You wanna pull upward with a steady, even pressure. Twisting or jerking can cause the mouth parts to remain in the skin. You don't want to do that. You want to get the tick as close to the skin as possible, all right? Once the tick has detached, examine the bite site to ensure that the mouth parts are completely removed. Wash your hands with soap and water, of course. Lavender essential oil has powerful antimicrobial properties and can help kill any of the pathogens that get left behind. Now, lavender oil is the only oil that you can apply to your skin just by itself in a neat state. You don't have to dilute it. Almost all of the other oils, we want you to dilute in a carrier oil before it comes in contact with your skin because a lot of these oils are very, very volatile and they will burn you. Okay, lavender will not do that. In fact, lavender is very, very good for a burn. You can dilute it if you want to, but you don't need to. And you put that lavender oil on that bite every five minutes for the first hour after you remove the tick. And that lavender oil has the ability to kill any pathogens before they set up camp inside your skin. Now, I didn't know this before I did this research, but you can actually, once you've removed the tick, you can send the tick away to a lab to have it tested to see if it is carrying Lyme disease. I don't know that that is something that you're going to want to do, but that is something that you can do. There are two companies that do this. One of them is called Tick Report, and the other one is called, it's a capital I gene, G-E-N-E, -E, and it's all one word, I gene. I is a capital, the G is a capital, gene, X is a capital, it's all one word, I-Gene-X. Okay, you can, you can send the tick to them. 
they will test the tick for you. I'm not sure what the price is, but you can send it to them and they can test it for Lyme disease or other tick-borne pathogens uh, if that's important to you. If that's not important to you, then you want to take the tick, you want to wrap it up in tape, and you want to take it to an outside trash can. You don't want to put it inside your home. Some people wrap it up in uh, tape and then put it in a Ziploc baggie and then put it in the outside trash can. Apparently, they are well-known escape artists, and so you don't want them escaping into your home. So those are some, some things that you can do with the tick if you find the tick on your body. So what I don't want you to do is I don't want you panicking and saying, oh my gosh, I've got a tick bite. I'm automatically going to get a tick-borne illness. I'm automatically going to get Lyme disease because that's not necessarily so, especially if you put that lavender oil on the bite every five minutes for the first hour after you remove the tick. So that would be a great preventative if you do find yourself out in the woods. And we like you to be in the woods. We like you to be in nature. We like you to be barefooted in the woods. We, we like that. That's very healthy for the human body. What we don't want is to bring the critters into the house. And we certainly don't want to bring the critters and their diseases into the body. So there, there are some practical things that you can do. Now, there are some connections clinically between ticks and mold. Now, we live in South Texas, which is a swamp, right? I mean, we're right on the Gulf of Mexico. It's very humid. It's very, very few days out of the year when the humidity is less than probably 70%. Most of the time, it's 80, 90, 95%. It's hot and sticky, and it's just not real nice to be out of doors. So we say, thank you, Jesus, that we have air conditioning, right? Because we love that. But the thing is, when you go outdoors in this moist, humid air, it hydrates your skin. So that's why Texas women have really pretty skin because they're, they get that uh, moisture. Uh, when I lived in England, I had a friend who came over to the United States to visit. They specifically went to Louisiana. And I asked her, I said, what did you think about the uh, humidity? She said, it was the most sultry experience I've ever had. And I just thought, oh, wow, I've never really thought about humidity as being a sultry experience, but, you know, different strokes for different folks. The main thing is the humidity in the air keeps moisture in the skin, which helps prevent wrinkles and age lines and all that kind of stuff, dry skin. So many patients who uh, struggle with Lyme disease have also been exposed to mold and that hinders their immune function. So this study is talking about mold. And as I was saying with where we live in South Texas and the swamp and the humidity, many, many of our houses, especially our old houses, have a lot of mold. Now, there are a lot of companies that have mold remediation. And yes, it is expensive, but it is absolutely necessary for your health that you get the mold out of your dwelling place, okay? Mold seriously depresses your immune system. If you live in a home with mold and you go out into the wild and you pick up a tick, you are going to be more susceptible to contracting Lyme disease and we don't want that. The article goes on to say, many clinicians recognize Lyme disease and mold illness as significant pieces in biotoxin related illnesses. These biotoxins, along with many others, have the ability to trip up the switch for chronic inflammation and immune suppression. So what do we mean by flip the switch? Okay, so you are born with a DNA signature and you may, your parents may have had cancer, your parents may have had some inherited disease, let's say leukemia, and it doesn't matter what you call it, all right? So genetically, you are predisposed to get that. But there's another study of science called epigenetics. Epigenetics says that what you eat, what you drink, who you love, how much drama you allow in your life will prevent negative switches from switching on. If you live right, drink right, you know, you, you eat appropriately and all that kind of stuff. So you do have a genetic component. We are prone to that. We do DNA testing here. We know that we have gene SNPs, okay, SNPs. 
when you have a gene SNP, that means that you are prone to a malfunction in that gene, and that's where hereditary diseases or hereditary conditions come from. But if you take the appropriate supplements, if you eat well, if you drink enough water, if you have drama out of your life, then you're not going to have those stressors that flip that switch to the negative uh, position. So what these clinicians are finding is that mold and tick-borne illnesses are enough stress on those broken genes to flip them into the on position, which means that you're going to be more likely to enter into a state of chronic inflammation. So that's not what you want to do. When mold and other biotoxins are not swiftly and efficiently removed from the body, they have the potential to instigate a progressive multi-symptom illness that impacts numerous systems within the body. So what does that sound like? That sounds like autoimmune disease, right? Autoimmune disease is when your body becomes confused. Why is your body confused? Because of the stress burden. So if you already have a mold burden, if you already have any other kind of biotoxins, what am I talking about? I'm talking about, in addition to mold, bacteria. I'm talking about heavy metals. I'm talking about chemicals. I'm talking about a viral load. We all have these. I'm talking about parasites. We all have these in our systems. So if we're not cleansing properly, if we're not nourishing properly, if we're not absorbing our nutrition, then these pathogens, these biotoxins that we all have, if you've been vaccinated, you've got biotoxins in your body. So if you're not cleansing, if you're not eliminating properly, if you're not absorbing your nutrition properly, then your immune system is going to be, become confused. And when it becomes confused, then you're going to trip the switch and you're going to move into chronic inflammation and immune suppression. When that happens, then you're going to develop an autoimmune disease and we don't want that to happen. When this happens, the body is a chronic inflammatory state that Dr. Richie Shoemaker calls chronic inflammatory response syndrome. And the anachronism for that is CIRS. Okay. I said anachronism. I said that last week and that's wrong. And I apologize. Acronism. I'm sorry. Okay. Many practitioners within the functional medicine would refer it to mold and biotoxin illness because deeper testing reveals exposure to at least one biotoxin. Tick-borne pathogens and mold exposures are both biotoxins that can trip up the inflammatory cascade. Now let's talk about inflammation. Inflammation is actually a good thing. When I go out into the world and I get in contact with somebody that has something, right? my body is going to recognize that it has come into contact with something other than self. It can be a virus, it can be a bacteria, it can be who knows what it is, and I don't even have to name it. The body is smart, and when the body sees that it has come into contact with something other than self, it mounts an immune response. What could that look like? That could look like a stuffy nose, that could look like a running nose, that could look like an allergic reaction, runny eyes, can't breathe, that can look like asthma, that can look like just a cough, uh, that can look like a rash on the skin, it can look like anything. That is an immune response and what that does is it's like the century on uh, the wall at the castle taking his trumpet to his mouth and blowing the trumpet and saying, you know, ta-da-ta-da, y'all come, we've got an invader in the house, we need all hands on deck to take care of this pathogen. What that does is it rouses all of your right, white cells. Your white cells come to the rescue. You've got uh, phagocytes and macrophages in there. We've talked about this before. They gobble up all of the pathogens. When they've done the cleanup work, the body goes, okay, we've averted the threat. We're all good. And your immune system calms back down. So inflammation is a good thing. It is a bad thing when inflammation stays on high alert for days, weeks, months, or even years. When that happens, you get into what they're calling that immune, uh, chronic immune response. When that happens, the body is on alert all the time and the body is fighting so many battles, it can't win. And that's why it trips the switches 
and we get over into an autoimmune disease. So we don't want that to happen. So what I want you to take away from this is inflammation is good short term. We don't want inflammation, inflammation day after day after day because that's when you get over into chronic uh, sickness and chronic disease. Now, I had a conversation with a lady this morning about her allergy symptoms. She's not sure what specific things she's come into contact with about her allergies. Well, I've been seeing her for a while. We know that there are gut issues. So we know that 80% of the immune system is where? It's in the gut. So if the microbiome of the gut is compromised, and it is compromised when we eat uh, fast food, it's compromised when we drink alcohol, it's compromised when we have the big drama llama in our life, right? Because we've got all that stress going on. It's compromised when we don't drink enough water. It's compromised when we don't get enough sleep because that's when the body repairs. So when that happens, the gut is messed up. We've got all those biotoxins in the gut. And so one more thing that we come in contact with, whether it is mold spore, uh, in this part of the world, most people are allergic to ragweed. Some people are not, some people are, a lot of people are. A lot of people in the northern part of the state are allergic to cedar because cedar grows up there. So it's not really the cedar or the ragweed that is the problem. The problem is a compromised immune system. So when we come in contact with that reactant, we set up an allergic response. So I just kind of want to give you a hint on that. So if you're trying to get rid of your allergies, you want to look at your immune system and see what kind of critters you're already carrying in your immune system that your immune system is fighting on a daily basis. And when that's going on, you're not going to have the resources to heal. You're not going to have the resources to be able to deal with that one more thing. I tell the lady today, it's like the straw that broke the camel's back. We always say that. We, we take it, we take it, we take it, and then there's that one thing. And when that one thing happens, we, we go berserk, right? We all know that response. That's what happens with your body whenever your body has all of these different assaults that we, we live in a dirty world. We just do. Environmentally, our world is dirty. None of us live in the Garden of Eden. Our babies are born with 500 different noxious chemicals in their body day one. Where are they getting them? They're getting them from their parents. That's just the way it is. So what we need to do is we need to understand how our immune system works. We need to work with the body in a smart way so that when we, we come against these things, that we're not going to be overcome by those things. So hopefully that's a lot of information for you. I'm going to give you this essential oil recipe again in case you didn't have your pencil at the first time. In a four ounce bottle, you're going to mix five drops of peppermint oil, five drops of cedarwood oil, seven drops of lavender oil, 10 drops of geranium oil, 10 drops of lemongrass, and 15 drops of lemon eucalyptus, all right? Put that in your four ounce bottle, fill the rest of the bottle up with um, water, purified water. Before you use it, shake it because oil and water do not mix. You can use this for your outdoor picnics. You can use this during mosquito season. You can use this during the love bug season that we have here in South Texas uh, twice a year. You can use it at any time. It's not going to hurt you, not even a little bit. You don't want to put it in your eyes, of course. You don't want to necessarily drink it. Please don't drink it because that's not what it's for. You can use it on your children. You can use it on your pets. You can use it on your furniture. You can use it. So just you know, be wise with it. And it is a good, safe way to prevent tick-borne illness. So I'm very hopeful that you learned a lot about Lyme disease. If you have Lyme disease and you want to contact us for some remedies, we would, we would love to work with you. We've worked with people in the past. And there are things that we can do to help you turn that situation around. It is a chronic disease, which means you've had it for a long time or you've had immune issues for a long time. It's not going to be... Uh, resolved tomorrow, but we can get it resolved. So if you need that help, just reach out to us. Uh, I took this information from the Epic Times and uh, Dr. Ashley Turner was the doctor that put all this together. She is a naturopath and a board certified holistic health 
doctor. So I think her practice is in Pennsylvania. I'm, I'm, I think that's when I researched her. I think that's where her practice is. So hope you've learned a lot. It is the weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Do some self-care. Get you at the end of your Christmas shopping done if you still need to do that. But take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of other people. Remember, I love you. I will see you next Friday. Next Friday will be Christmas Eve. It'll be the last time I'll speak to you this year. But I will speak to you next week. And take care and have a great, great weekend. Love you. Bye.